This podcast contains adult content suitable for mature audiences only. A full list of our trigger warnings will be found down in our show notes. Listener discretion is advised. When your fears have taken the toll, when the demons have got up control, when the shadows just won't leave you alone, I'll be there. When your rainbows have turned into black, when the sun has turned. To the morbid forest. Oh, what a day, my friend. Yes, the beast of the realm is a concern. He's growing bolder in his efforts. I fear my nightmares are a bad omen. But no matter for now, let's head inside and relax and maybe... Larry, what is it? Well, isn't this an unpleasant surprise? You know... Disturbing someone else's home isn't a good idea, traveler. (laughs) Yes, my home comes with a set of lovely wards to protect me, because by the looks of you, no isn't in your vocabulary. Hmm, what to do with you? You know, you're quite lucky he didn't break into Mr. Hernan's house. Andy pulled the van up to the house on Walnut Street and put it in park. He'd never been here before, even though he grew up a few streets over. He'd heard the stories about Walnut Street, though. And like all small towns, there was always that one street everyone made up stories about. Maybe there was a murder, or some couple disappeared, or worse yet, a whole family just up and fled in the middle of the night, never to be heard from again. Oddly enough, Mr. Hernan's place was a house that no stories existed about. Mr. Hernan had lived there all of Andy's life. He'd been a fifth grade science teacher at Berkeley Elementary for over 40 years. Mr. Hernan had only just retired in the last few years to live out retirement peacefully. And he remembered Mr. Hernan's room at the school well. It had long, high, blacktop counters with a sink in each one and two stools per table. He laughed at the memory of Emily Hillman screaming when they revealed the dead frogs that they had to dissect. And he got out of the trusty handyman van. He'd put on some weight since he left high school, but... A lot of it was solid muscle from working with construction materials every day. His brown work boots, jeans, and blue company t-shirt only showed a slight gut. He walked around to get into the back, put on his tool belt, and then grabbed his toolbox and boombox. He'd been called by the realtor, Olivia Lopez, to come and do some contractor work in the house before she could sell the place. Mr. Hernan had died about three weeks ago, and Olivia was selling the place on behalf of the old man's son, Bobby. The house was a two-story ranch-style home built in the 50s. They had updated the siding in the last 10 years with a powder blue vinyl that made the house inviting. Andy walked up onto the small porch and unlocked the door with the key that Olivia had given him. Once Andy was inside, he shivered. The house must have been 60 degrees on the inside compared to the arid 80 degrees it was outside. He checked to see if the air conditioning was on and set low, but he found that it was off. The temperature on the thermostat said 75. 
it seemed almost impossible that it felt so cold inside when it had been in the high 70s and 80s for the last two weeks. He checked to see if the thermostat was broken, but could find nothing wrong with it. He made his way to the first floor bathroom to check out the bathtub. Olivia said it had been leaking, but he couldn't see any cracks in the tub. He made the assumption it was probably the drain leaking under the tub, but he wouldn't know for sure until he tore the whole thing out. He set up the boombox and flipped it on. Pour Some Sugar On Me by Def Leppard quickly filled the cold air of the house. Once he had some music, Andy got to work, and within an hour, he had the tub disconnected, unscrewed from the wall, and pulled out to see what was going on underneath. He recoiled back as the stench hit him. It smelled like something had died under the tub, but Andy couldn't see any reason that the odor should be there, or why it was so strong. He checked the drain pipe, and it was clear as far as he could tell, but he'd have to snake it to make sure. <sighs> he sighed. Plumbing was one of the worst things about this job. They had a plumber on hand back at the shop with two other guys who worked for Trusty Handyman, but the plumber was so busy most of the time that Andy had got certified so he could just do it himself. He went back out and got the snake, but after using it found nothing blocking the pipes. In fact, in his attempt to find the source of the smell, he somehow made it worse. He shook his head. This was going to end up being a bigger job than he imagined. He went into the unfinished basement and found the area where the bathroom was and tried to find the source of the smell on the leak, and he found neither. He headed back upstairs when he heard a scratching sound. Oh, rats. He thought that could explain the smell and the leak, especially if they chewed even the tiniest of holes in the pipes. And he felt kind of stupid now that he thought about it. He was going to have to hook up the tub again and run the water to determine where the leak was at. It was frustrating. As he hooked the tub back up, he heard something slide across the hardwood floors. He stopped and listened carefully. He hadn't heard the front door open, so no one should be in the house. He went out to check and see what was going on, when he saw that the floor had long, deep gouges in the hardwood. Damn it! Andy quickly turned and shouted into the house. Okay, who the hell's in here? You know you just made me a ton of more work. The house was silent other than the sounds of Fleetwood Mac singing the chain. Olivia? No answer. He stepped into the hall and walked down it towards the two bedrooms that were on the first floor. As he passed by the first door, he jumped oh. and yelped. Someone was in the room. He hugged the wall and pulled the hammer from his tool belt. Okay, whoever you are, you better come out. I ain't playing games. He took a deep breath and steeled himself for this encounter. He rushed into the room and saw a man standing across from him wielding a hammer. And he stopped dead in his tracks. <laughs> he then laughed hard. Across from him was a mirror. Oh, oh dear God. And he was not one to be spooked by an empty house, even if it was freezing inside. He'd been in plenty over the last 10 years. And he replaced the hammer on his belt and left the room closing the door. He then closed all the doors that were open, mirror or no mirror being present. Oh, 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 you you gotta get a grip, man. He chuckled again at himself and went back to the bathroom. He turned the water on and let it run for a minute. Soon, a trickle of water came flowing from under the tub, so there was indeed a leak. He just hoped it wasn't in the wall. As he went down the steps to the basement, he felt the air grow even colder. His skin prickled as a cold sweat formed and headed along his spine. Once at the bottom of the steps, he saw the water pooling on the floor. He walked to the spot and found the leak. It was the tiniest hole in the one and a half inch drain pipe. He marched back upstairs and shut off the water. The water drained slowly from the tub, much slower than it should. He stuck the snake back down the drain but felt no resistance. He let out all 25 feet of the snake and found nothing. When he wound the snake back up, though, with it came something black and slimy. It looked like an algae-like sludge and it stunk so bad, and he nearly passed out. He left the bathroom feeling lightheaded and fell onto the couch as a headache formed. His stomach seemed to tighten into knots and he felt sick. He got up and staggered to the door, but he couldn't get it to unlock. His vision narrowed until he fell backward and smacked his head off the floor. And he had passed out cold. When he came to, it was dark outside. He groaned as he sat up. 
his head swimming what with the, the pain of a full-on migraine. What the hell happened? He wondered. Slowly, his memory came back to him. He went back into the bathroom and found everything exactly as he'd left it. The only thing missing was the black, slimy substance that had stunk so badly. He shook his head and took off his tool belt, laying it on the bathroom floor. The rest of this job could wait until tomorrow. He headed back to the front door and opened it, but looking through the door, he didn't see the street. What he saw was the mirror image of the house, but instead of it being Andy standing at the door, it was Mr. Hernan. What the hell? Andy staggered backward and watched as Mr. Hernan was mouthing words with no sound coming out. The old man then shut the door and Andy watched in horror as the door he had opened closed without a hand touching it. He scrambled backwards until he hit the wall and slid to the floor. He quickly stood up and went through the door to his right and found himself in the kitchen. And he took several quickened steps to the back door, unlocking it and throwing it open, only to see just blackness. And he panicked. What was going on? He was panting as he went to every window looking out and seeing nothing but that blackness. It almost looked like an ooze that was slowly swirling and dripping. He caught a whiff of that decaying smell once more and began running around the house like a madman, throwing open doors and looking into each room. It all seemed so ordinary. He took deep, gulping breaths and tried not to pass out again. He approached the last room on the top floor and again that stench hit him. He shuddered and felt the cold sweat beat up again. His hand was shaking as he reached up for the doorknob. He said a silent prayer as he threw open the door and found the most macabre display he had ever seen. Hanging from a chain set in the ceiling was the man, skinned alive. And he rushed and vomited right there on the floor. The floor was covered in that black slime. He noticed below him was a drain set on the floor with the slime overflowing from it. Tears welled up in Andy's eyes as he looked up to see Mr. Herman carving chunks of meat from the man. He shook his head and squeezed his eyes shut. This wasn't right. This was so very wrong. Why? What's happening? He cried as he vomited again. He couldn't catch his breath. He could see the ripped and shredded clothing just hanging from the corpse in bloody rags. And he choked as he saw the blue shirt with its front pocket visible. On it was the logo for the trusty handyman company. He looked up in shock and stared at the man. His breath was ragged and shallow as he realized that the man hanging from the chains was him. How could that be? No! And he screamed until his voice was raw. He coughed hard and spit up blood. He'd collapsed onto the floor now and could hear that scratching again. He could see the black dress shoes of Mr. Hernan shine to a bright sheen as he walked over to Andy and knelt down. This is how it's always gonna be. You and me, here and now. His voice was raspy and harsh, nothing like the soothing voice of the man who taught science class at Breaker Elementary. Andy didn't understand. He couldn't comprehend what was happening. How is he both alive and dead? Free and chained? Nothing made sense. Andy struggled to his knees and saw that Mr. Hernan's face had become twisted and grotesque, with horns curled back from his head. His skin was red and blistered, with parts of his face charred black. His olive-colored sweater vest with his white button-up shirt was stained with gore. His hands were black and charred as well with long fingernails that were filed to a point, like claws. Andy looked around and could see mirrors along the wall. He looked into one and saw his first date with Sheila Monroe. He watched the scene unfold as he forced her to sleep with him. She cried in the back of his 69 Camaro and fled on his seat as he drove her home. Another mirror showed him and a group of guys beating the hell out of some black guy, shouting obscenities at him as they left him broken and bleeding on the ground. And he didn't want to look at them anymore, but he couldn't stop himself. The next mirror showed him at the lake for a weekend on that fishing trip. He cheated on his wife with no less than three hookers that weekend. Another showed a guy who'd stabbed and left for dead out on Route 66. The guy had approached him in the showers at a truck stop. And he found the man disgusting, 
He'd read in the newspaper later on how the guy died, leaving behind a wife and five kids. Andy cried as he looked at his hands and saw them covered in blood. He looked at his reflection and watched it twist into a grotesque monster. He watched as his face split into a fanged smile. You did this to yourself. yourself. And he put his hands together and prayed. Please, Lord, save me. The Lord cannot save you now. Mr. Hernan hissed. And he sobbed as other details in the room became clear. He could see the full skeleton that Mr. Hernan had kept in a science class. He saw heads and other body parts in jars, each displayed with framed photographs of Mr. Hernan posing with the corpses. One of Andy's last thoughts before he felt the blade slide between his ribs was... Was... Mr. Hernan a serial killer? It was a ridiculous thought. After seeing the monster, he was... Mr. Hernan helped Andy up. He was gasping and coughing up blood. Mr. Hernan then chained Andy and hung him from the ceiling. The next morning, Olivia stopped by the house to see how the work was progressing. The trusty handyman van was still parked out front, but as Olivia called out for Andy, she got no answer. She searched the entire house and found no sign of the man, only his tools and the boombox playing Highway to Hell by ACDC. A few days later, Andy's wife reported him missing. The police filed a missing person report and investigated his disappearance. They searched for him for about two weeks, but found no evidence of his whereabouts. The lead detective was Sheila Monroe's husband, now Sheila Castor. Some say that on dark, frosty nights, you can hear music, a demand frantically banging on doors and screaming at windows. Most do hear the music in the dead of night, I would a hell, by ACDC. No one ever saw Andy again. They later connected 111 Walnut Street with several more disappearances over the years. The legend of Mr. Hernan's house grew with every passing year, and eventually, people couldn't mention Mr. Hernan's house without talking about Andy the trusty handyman. This has been a Morbid Forest production, and on this week's episode, you've heard Mr. Hernan's House, written by E.L. Knight, with narration by Devin Bohr as your narrator, Matthew Trevino as Andy, and Ron Hyatt as Mr. Hernan. Story editing and audio production by Naomi Richards. Our theme music this season is The Shadows by Nandi Bushhill. Music and sound effects provided by Epidemic Sound. Don't forget, Inkwell Haven is still going strong. Are you not caught up yet? Well, don't you worry about that, travelers. I have a link for you down in our show notes of all the episodes out so far. Follow us on X or Twitter if you're old school, Instagram, Tumblr, Discord, Threads, and Blue Skies to stay up to date on all the happenings within the forest. Interested in more morsels of the forest? Then join our Patreon. As a faithful traveler, you'll receive exclusive access to ad-free early episode releases and bonus content for only $3 a month. That's patreon.com slash themorbidforest. Love what you're hearing? Then leave us a review on your favorite podcast platform. Reviews and ratings help us reach more travelers out there, just like you. And with that, We'll see you next time on The Morbid Forest. <laughs>